Let's learn how to summon Foundry VTT. Sure, whenever you or your players need to summon, you could simply just drag a token onto the map. However, that's a little bit boring. We live in the goddamn future. And as DMs of the internet, we need our players to collectively soil themselves when the pit fiend hits the table. So today we abolish the ubiquity of dragging and dropping, and instead, I'm going to teach you how to make a macro that can summon tokens with style. So before you can start summoning the boys, you're going to need to start summoning some modules first. First, we're going to need the warp gate and foundry summons module. Those two modules are going to actually allow us to create a macro that summons a token from the actor tab to the canvas. Then we're going to need sequencer, which is going to allow us to create special effects. And then we're going to need some modules to actually give us special effects, like JB2A or Jack Kerax animated spell effects. Once you have all the modules necessary, we can start making the macro. So, click on the empty spot in the hotbar, make sure to type it set the script, then type in let summon equal await warpgate.spawn, then the name of the token you like to summon. Press execute, click somewhere on the canvas, and then you've done it. You've made your first summoning macro. You can now spice up your summon with an effect by adding a sequence to the macro. I've already covered in a previous video how to create a sequencer macro which I highly recommend you check out so you can get a better understanding of Sequencer. But for this video, I'm going to speedrun a very simple Sequencer macro for us. So, head over to a new line in your macro, start the sequence off with new sequence, and then let's add a wait method so we can wait for our token to spawn briefly before playing an effect. Let's now make an effect section, put in a file method, and head over to the Sequencer database, and let's find an effect copy and paste what you like, punch it in, now go to at location, and we're going to set the location to be summon, and then set the scale to somewhere around the range of the token, and then finish it with dot play, execute the macro, and now we're summoning with an effect on top. So, summoning's pretty easy, right? Well, not so fast. It's good for those one-off times you need to summon one special creature to the field, it's not so good when it comes to spells, where there's a whole array of monsters that you could choose from. And unless you want an actor tab that is filled with every possible option, then we're gonna need a better way to summon. So enter Foundry Summons. Foundry Summons is a module that uses warp gate to summon tokens, but instead of pulling from the actor tab, it's going to pull from neatly organized compendiums you create. In addition, it's going to create a neat little menu for you and your players of every possible token they can summon. To use Foundry Summons, we're going to need to do a bit of setup. So first, let's go in and create a compendium to store all the summon tokens. You could just create only one compendium, but I personally am going to create multiple and categorize them by the different summon lists there are. Once you've done that, fill all the compendiums with all the tokens you need, and then head over to configure settings, go down to foundry summons, then in the summoning sources section, select all the compendiums you want this module to pull from. And now that we're all set up, we can now pull up the summoning menu by creating macro. So click an empty spot in the hotbar, set it to script, and then type in let summon equal await foundry summons dot open menu parentheses scope close parentheses. Execute and now the foundry summons menu will pop up. You can select who the summoning token is, select how many creatures you want to summon, then select the creature you are summoning and then click summon. Click the map and there you go. However, we're still not quite done with the macro. Currently, the players can see every single token within the compendiums. So we're going to need to add filters to the macro to limit their options. If you were to take a quick gander at the Foundry Summons compendium page, you'll find a few examples on how to actually create these filters. From filtering by name, trait, level, or even specific type of creatures. 
Now, depending on the filter you want to use, you're going to have to know the actual property behind the trait you're filtering by, which is going to differ between game systems. So, to keep the macro as simple and system agnostic as possible, I'm going to filter the tokens by the specific compendiums that they are in. To do this, we're going to need to define our compendium. And it's not going to be as simple as typing in the compendium's name. Rather, we're going to need to find out the compendium's key name. And to do so, we're going to need to open up the Foundry console. So slam F12, go to the very bottom, type in game.packs.keys, open parentheses, close parentheses, enter that in, and it's going to pull up all the key names of every compendium that you have. Find the compendium that you want, then punch that into our definition of the compendium variable. Now let's create our object and define the creatures option of the object to equal game.packs.get compendium. Now we can change our scope variable to be object, then execute, and we're going to bring up our now filtered summon list. And now all we got to do is add a sequencer effect and the macro is complete. So let's go back to our object and add the option no animation and set that to true. This is going to negate the default fade in animation that Foundry summons includes. Then we actually gotta define our summon token. So after the open menu line, let's add let summon token equal summon dot token IDs. And because it's possible to summon more than one token, we're going to need our sequence to loop for each and every summon token. So to do so, let's create a for loop that looks just like this shove our sequence into the for loop and make sure to include an animation section into our sequence that will turn the token opacity to 1 or else we'll summon an invisible token and then make sure we define all the locational objects to be summon token bracket i close bracket now give your macro a final test run and boom you've done it and now that you've gone through all the pain and trouble of learning how to make a Foundry Summons macro, let me ruin all your effort by informing you that this summoning macro, amongst many other macros, are available on my Discord server, so you could just simply copy and paste them into your games. And while you're there, you can help me out by giving me a holler and letting me know what other videos you'd like to see me do in the future because I like to do some crazy shit in Foundry, but I don't really know what kind of crazy things you guys like to do in your games. So, let me know.